Greetings Peepazoids, my name is Bubs and welcome to day 6 of the 30 day gaming challenge. And for day 6, I am tackling Untold Stories. A game as it so aptly titles there, Four Stories, One Nightmare. And this is a game I heard about a long long time ago um, but never got around to playing. And it functions as something of an anthology series told through videotapes. Um, and I believe they are all meant to interconnect in some way. Um, at the moment we only have access to episode 1, The House Abandoned. Um, before we get started, I'm going to tick subtitles because that's always good. Okay. And if we have time, because this is only a snapshot, I'll see if I can do episode 2 as well. But let's dive into Stories Untold. If you find yourself stuck, try to look around for clues. Okay. Oh, this is different. This has got a very Stranger Things vibe to it. Set tapes, lovely. That is so Stranger Things. In terms of that intro, that's very Stranger Things. Oh, I'm digging this. I'm going to be asking myself a lot throughout this challenge, but how have I not played this before? <laughs> okay. Or is it loading up the... There it is, the house abandoned. That is so cool. Interactive horror adventure. Oh, is this like a typing adventure? Um... Oh, it is! You pull up to the driveway of the family holiday home and park the car. It's dark, but it's as idyllic as you remember from all that time ago. You remember being told to look in the glove box before going in. It's good to be back. Um, open... Oh, sorry, I've got caps lock on. Open the glove box. Inside is a key and a hand... <laughs> this is awesome. Um, the ha key and a handwritten note from Dad. You take both. Read note. Notice from your dad and reads. Hi son, hope you enjoy your break. You'll need to fire up the generator around back to get power and lights on. Also, found something in the attic for you. It's in your room. Enjoy. You pull up to the driveway of the family holiday home and park the car. Oh, okay. So this is... We're going through this again. Um... Glove box is open, we've already taken the contents. Okay, so it, I've never played an interactive text adventure game like this. Um, so you have to bear with me while I get used to it. But So we've all, it's just setting the scene for us again afterwards. So we've already taken the context. So leave car. You open the car door and step out. The house is grand, sat perfectly amongst the trees. In front of you is the front door and the yard stretches around the side of the house. Uh, open front door. The door appears to be locked. You will need to use a key. Do we have the key? Oh, we do. We got it from the glove box. Okay, that's cool. The door lock clicks open. Okay, open door. You step inside the front door. You enter the house to the hallway. It's dark and you can't see anything. You feel a light switch next to the door, however. Uh, flick... Light switch. A click and nothing. There is no power. The note should say how to restore it. Okay, let's read the note. Okay, let's say go outside. Okay, we can't skip the text. So, let's read the note now. The note is from your dad and reads, Hi son, yeah, we've read this before. Uh... Okay, so, 
We need to go around back to fire up the generator, so... So... Go to back of house. No, that's not what I wanted to do. Okay, so... Saying go round back. So what if I say... Go to the yard. There we go. <laughs> that took a little longer than it should have. The yard has been well maintained. You spent a lot of time here with your family on holiday trips. Good memories. Okay, so... Look for generator. Okay, the fuel gauge is healthy and it is manually operated. Turn on. You don't know what I'm trying to use. Okay. Um, go to generator. Standing next to the generator. Look at generator. Fuel gauge is healthy. It is manually operated. Use generator. You switch. There we go. Yeah, it's got to be quite simplistic. The switch the generator on and it whirs to life. The house is still dark. Okay, so that's because we haven't flicked the light switch. So if we go to front door, walk back around to the front of the house. Okay, so this is setting the scene again. Open front door. Okay, now we just get back to the light switch. So flick switch. Uh, use switch. You flick the switch and the lights come on. The hallway is now brightly lit. There is access to the kitchen and living room here, as well as a set of stairs going up. Okay, so we've got some options here. So we can go to the kitchen, the living room, or we can go upstairs. Uh, let's go to the living room. We step inside the living room. A spacious and comfortable living room. We spent a lot of good time here playing board games with the family. Warm and inviting. Oh, that's cool. Nothing really to sort of... That's very sweet. I wonder who we are, actually. Probably just a family man. I do know the House Abandon is an old game, and this is kind of a semi-release, semi-remake, this particular section. Uh, so if we go back to the hallway... So whenever I'm playing a game and I'm in a house, I like to explore it level by level, unless I need to come back to it later. Uh, let's go to the kitchen next. Maybe we can cook up some grub. The kitchen is tidy and well kept. There is a door to a utility room, but otherwise it's just a kitchen. Uh, go to utility room. Okay, so the utility room's locked. I'm guessing the key's upstairs, so go to hallway. Okay. Let's go up the stairs. Walk upstairs to the landing. The stairwell landing. There is a bathroom and two bedrooms, yours and your sister's. Oh, okay, so it is the family home, that's cool. Pictures adorn the walls. Images of happy times. Let's look at the pictures. Look at pictures. If I could spell, this would help. Family photos and holiday snaps. Our happy family. Okay. Nothing to be gleaned from there. Uh, let's go to the bathroom. Glad I went before I started recording this. We step inside the bathroom. You are in the bathroom. There's not much to note, but it's all in good order. Okay, nothing in there then. Let's go to sister's room first. Go to sister's... Oh, wait. Sister's room. You walk into your sister's old room. Your sister's room is in perfect condition, untouched since the last time you had seen her. Posters of her heroes and some of her own attempts at art adorn the walls. 
A few shelves are crammed full of trophies. Her bed is drowned under a pile of colorful soft toys. A real nostalgia trip. <laughs> uh, let's go to the bed. Okay, it doesn't understand that. Uh, look at soft toys. Every soft toy she ever owned. Okay, nothing to glean there. Let's go back to the hallway. I'm loving this. This is cool. I've never... I keep saying it, but I've never played a game... This is why I wanted to do this challenge, to play things like this. Stuff I never... Maybe never have touched. And this is definitely well outside the realms of my normal um, game style. Now let's go to our room. Go to your room. You walk into your old room, your old bedroom. So many good memories in here, and it's been preserved so well. On the desk is a gift-wrapped box. Pick up box. Okay. Open gift-wrapped box. Let's be a bit more specific. We unwrap the gift excitedly. You can't believe it. Dad has found your old computer. A Futuro 128 k plus 2. It's been preserved well in the attic and hopefully still works. Okay, so we've got our computer. Okay, so we've now set the scene that the desk is... The computer's on the desk and the copy of the House of Bandon is all still to be set up though. Uh, so if we say set up computer... You start to plug in the various cables and leads. You remember when the older consoles used to have, like, so many cables and everything? It was mad. The computer is all set up and ready to go. There is a game here, too. Look at game. It's a new horror game called The House Abandoned. Looks ace! Oh, well. Nothing left to do except play it. Play game. Put the cassette in the computer and press play. Whoa! <laughs> I'm guessing that's the computer on our right here. Okay. Oh no. It's upside down. What's that say? Get out. Oh, this is different. It's similar to what we just described, except it's darker. You pull up to the driveway of the family holiday home and park the car. It's dark, but it's clearly neglected. You remember being told to check the glove box before going in. You can't stand to be near this place. I don't know if I want to do this, but let's see where this goes. Open glove box. Inside is a key and a handwritten note from Dad. You take both. Read note. This is different. Oh no, you don't recognize the handwriting. It says get out, 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 get out. Yeah. Gets cut off halfway. I'm getting some serious Halloween vibes from this music and I don't like it. Let's, let's leave the car. Get out of the car. You force the warped car door open and fall out. The house looks abandoned. This is different. This is a yard to the... S there is a yard to the side. Wood creaks in the wind and all happy memories are gone from this place. There is no love here. Go to the yard. You step through the debris to the backyard. The grass is overgrown and weed crawls up the side of the house. It's not a nice place to be. You clutch the note, needing to look around. Look around. There is an old generator next to you. Use generator. Oh, that's freaky. Oh, it's almost like we're in the story. Oh, this is so cool. There isn't much fuel, but the generator starts up. Uh, leave 
the yard. You go back to the front of the house. Flickering lights, it's never a good sign. Let's see what we did before, if we go to the front door, maybe? Okay, look around. The lights are off, windows are broken, there is the front door and a yard. Okay, go to front door. Use front door? The door appears to be locked, you will need to use the key. Use key. You unlock the door, the click of the lock hurts to hear. This is a literally a 180 of the experience we just had. Open door. I'm gonna regret this, aren't I? You reluctantly step inside. Does that door just slam? Pitch black, but your senses are punished more by the smell, stale air and damp. This could not be less inviting. The note burns in your hands and you feel compelled to read it over and over. Okay, read note. Feels weird to the touch. Note burns in your hands. How would we... Feel note? Okay, fair enough. Uh, okay. Feel around. Let's feel around for a light switch. You switch. Okay. Afraid of what you might see, you turn on the lights. The lights flicker on and off. The walls are falling apart after years of neglect or worse. There are stains. Upstairs, the sound of an alarm clock blaring. Someone else is in this house. That can't be. Are we someone else? Go upstairs. Oh, I really don't like this. Make it stop, make it stop, make it stop, make it stop, make it stop. Turn off alarm. Oh, okay. That helps. You are still in the hallway. The noise has stopped, but you feel a presence. Someone is in the house. They should not be here. There is a kitchen and a living room adjacent, and stairs leading up. The note feels disgusting in your hands. Oh. Well, we didn't get anything out of the living room or the kitchen last time, so let's head upstairs straight away. You head up the stairs, they creak. Same but different, the landing has access to your sister's, sister's room. Your room and the bathroom. Oh, Jesus. Behind the door, a phone starts to ring. You don't understand. Neither can he. Answer phone. You hear him answer the phone. Your mind hurts now. Voices spill out of the phone into the room. Whoever is in there should not be there. You need to hang up the phone. I do. Whoever. You consider the worst. Hang up. Relief. Same, but different. The landing has access to your sister's sister's room, your room, and the bathroom. Okay. Go to sister's room. Jennifer's room is boarded up. You can't bear this. Go to your room. The door is bolted shut with a four-digit combination lock. Which we don't have. Go to bathroom. You enter the bathroom. The bathroom feels disgusting. Every surface is covered in a layer of oily grime. Ugh. The sink is a haven for all kinds of bugs. Lovely. Look in sink. It's disgusting. Grime and dead bugs. The taps won't budge. Okay, let's go back to the landing. Maybe the... we need the four-digit code to get into our room. Not the timer on the clock, is it? Go to... The clock above the television? 
open lock. You grab the lock. The lock is rusted, not used in years. The key in your hand weighs heavy, the note heavier. You grab the lock and can now input the code. I'm gonna say it's 999. Okay, that's fair enough. Go downstairs. You let go of the lock. Okay, so it didn't take us downstairs, so let's go downstairs. Uh, actually, let's look at the pictures just in case. This might give us what we need. Picture of family. The eyes have been scored out. Oh, wonderful. Go downstairs. This game's getting creepy. And it seems like we're in the house that... Yeah, see? The photos are all there with the scorched eyes. Oof. Okay, so let's go to the living room first. Just need a four-digit code. The living room, although hardly an appropriate term. The furniture is threadbare and worn. The note is fixed in your mind. Dread fills the pit of your stomach. This is not a nice place. Let's look around. Run down and empty, abandoned and for good reason. Okay, so nothing out here that could help with the code. Go to hallway. Actually, no, let's read the note. The note always changing now reads, get through this, I don't care if you want to or not. The note keeps changing its message. Interesting. You return to the hallway. You're still in the hallway. The noise has stopped, but you feel a presence. Someone is in the house. Okay, that's repeating. I'm just going to read the note again, just in case. Oh, the note's bleeding. See, this is how you know it's a good example of good storytelling when it freaks you out. You go to the kitchen. The kitchen stinks and feels completely unfamiliar. The tabletops are rusted metal and there is a carcass on the table. There is writing on the wall and the utility room door has a red X painted on it. Uh, let's read the writing. Read writing on the wall. In blood, the number 1986 is smeared across the wall. Okay, so 1986 is the code. Uh, open utility room. This door is locked. I can't get in there. Not yet. Okay, so let's go back to the hallway and go upstairs. You step back to the hallway. Your shoes are... I didn't catch that. You're still in the hallway. The noise has stopped. Yep. Okay. Upstairs. Okay, let's go to our room. Let's use... Oh, hang on. Let's open lock. 1986. The lock clicks open. I can hear that lock to my right. Same, but different. The landing has access to your sister's room. Okay, so we go into your room. The door is closed. Okay, so the door is closed. Oh, open your bedroom door. Ooh. Oh, I don't like that. I don't like that. Go inside. Go into your room. You enter your bedroom. The bed... Oh, I can hear him moving. The bedroom feels utterly familiar. The walls are damp, but you've seen been here before. In front of you, a lone person, oh good God, sits in front of a computer screen. The lamp is on. The clock reads 9999. You shouldn't be here. I shouldn't be here. You grip the note tight. Oh, I don't know. Read note. I'm sorry, Jennifer. I'm sorry, Mum. I'm sorry, Dad. 
You haunt every step I take, even in this place. It was out of my hands, but still you punish me. I can be with you now. There is nothing left to do. I'm consumed and confused. This has to end now. End it. You are pathetic. It was all your fault. Say it. No. Oh, please stop. Stop. It was all my fault. Say it. It was all my fault. F-I-N-A-L. Finally. Oh, I don't like this. Ooh. Oh, that was weird. That was only the first episode. Oh, that was weird, guys. So... We... We went into the house... In, a, like, a happy, fond version. And then... We... It was like a twisted, corrupted version, and we found us, ourselves, at that computer, telling this story. It's all our fault. Ooh, that's weird. I liked it. I liked it a lot. Well, I don't think one episode's enough to get us a good snapshot of this game, so I'm going to try out the lab conduct. Because I know these are meant to be, at least my idea behind it is it's very different storytelling styles. Sometimes you may need to look beyond the screen to progress. Okay. I was saying opening intro again. Okay. Episode 2, Lab Conduct. 12-19-86-23, new session entry. We have myself, Dr. Alexander Leading, assisted by Dr. Williams, and in the lab itself, our volunteer, Mr. Asian. I take it we that's us. We have 23 in the chamber, recovered from crash site B. At the moment it appears inert, showing no signs of activity. Mr. Asian, instructions for each stage will come through to your terminal, and we need you to follow them exactly. Now, some of this may be unfamiliar, so... Do these all take place at computer desks? ...for guides on calibration and procedure. Once you've calibrated equipment to match our brief, the green light will flash, allowing you okay. to the experiment. One last thing. Ensure that any equipment non-essential to the current experiment is switched off. You cannot proceed until your calibration matches ours. When you're ready, let's bring this back. Okay, so this is different. So experiment one, internal analysis. Subject J1, sorry, J9, oh, there's 1986 again. MEM is enclosed in solid outer layers. X-ray the artifact to determine its internal structure. Oh, so these are keys. So M, manual. Electromagnetic spectrum. So we need to X-ray the artifact. So we want number one. Electromagnetic spectrum X-ray requires camera monitor set to X-ray, which we've done, and charge CC86 X-ray device. And we look around. Press the keys in brackets in the top menu to move between pages. Press tab to roll over to the test chamber. Oh, okay. Oh, this is different. Okay, so that's the x-ray machine. Okay. We go back to M. Back to 1. So the camera needs to be working. The monitor, which we've set to x-ray, charge CC86 on the x-ray device. Uh, oh, that's the signal generator. We don't want that. That's the laser generation unit. Which one's the x-ray device? 
Ah, there's the camera. Okay. We've got the camera, we've got the monitor, we now need the x-ray data. Oh, C, B, A, 6. Oh, this is it. Duh. C, C, 8, 6. Okay, so it's charged. XR. This needs to come off. That needs to go off. Alright, let's do it. Okay, good work. The x-ray is coming through now. Hey, I'm a scientist. No visible damage to the surrounding organic material. And no signs of activity either. All output is flatlined. So okay. it doesn't look like there's any life then. Hey, so next experiment. Surface reaction attempt. Demonstrate the effects of laser light on the object. Try using a lower powered red laser to begin with. Okay, so concentrated light. So we need the LZR2 light generator set wavelength. So we need 650 nm and the monitor set to RGB. Which I think is this. So 650. And this needs to be reset. There we go. Let's try it. Oh, that looks like a heart. No yeah, you guys can see that, that's fine. Let's try high frequency. All right, next one. Okay, another surface reaction attempt, this time using the green laser. Okay, so green is 510. Try it. Okay, we have a reaction of some sort here, a weak signal. Let's keep going. Increase again. Okay. Demonstrate the effects. Yeah, yeah, we know this. So, oh wait, no, hang on, sorry. Blue laser, let's be a little bit more what they want us to be. 455. Five. Okay, four, five, five. We're just going to keep gradually increasing the laser until we get. Oh, there it is! Well, it's beating. Would you look at that? It seems we have a pulse. I don't trust it's it though. Stable. No activity registering in the core. It's possibly damaged. It's got a steady heartbeat, whatever it is. Okay, so this time we're going for the resonant frequency. Test the acoustic resonance properties of the object. Begin with generating a 250 hertz synth wave with the amplifier gain set to one. Okay, so, hang on, let's just go back. So we're doing acoustic resonance, so that will be number three. So we need the signal generator set frequency and wave form. So we need a swirly line and the amplifier is set to gain. So the set gain for this to one and 250 Hertz. Okay, I think I got it. Let's turn you off. Let's turn you off. So this needs to be a swirly line. And this needs to be two 10, did they say? I think they said 210, I'm pretty sure, if it goes that high. Come on, check along, little counter. Okay. 210. Gain set to 1. I think I got everything, didn't I? So, oh, 250. Gain one. We've got the gain set. 250 hertz. Am I missing something? Oh. Uh... Okay. 
There we are. It's not much of a response. Uh, updating the experiment now. We're gonna have to get stronger. Okay, so 500 hertz, gallop 5 gain. Very precise. I wonder what we're experimenting on. An alien heart, maybe? Okay, it's getting stronger. Some fluctuations in activity. Should we increase? Do the risk of damage? Possibly. What about the velocity? Oh, that sounded sinister. Okay, we're gonna push further. I'm running out of time. Let's switch around. Okay. Okay, so another one. So this time we want square wave. So just square wave with the current frequency already set. So square is the zigzag. That's fairly self-explanatory because it looks squarish. Okay, let's go. Oh dear. Why is that endangering us and the hearts in here? Seeing good activity on this side. Seeing definite spikes in movement. What are we trying I to accomplish? Uncomfortable or dangerous. You think? But you need to trust us and keep going. Okay, so this time the gain stays at five. Square wave stays. One kilohertz. I'm assuming that's a thousand. I don't like where this is going. Getting too erratic. This thing's gonna blow up in my face, isn't it? This one's definitely a bit more sci-fi than horror so far, though. Here we go. That heart. Oh, we blew it up. But we killed it. Yeah, I can hear you. You've made excellent progress. You're doing great. Now we need you to stay calm and try to relax as we go through these next steps. We're going to attempt to alleviate some of this discomfort. Alleviate how? The connection, the protective casing is off. Oh, so that's what we were doing. We're trying to get that to its shell. Proceed to drill. Okay. So, drill. Switch the drill on. Ensure all other equipment except the camera and TV are switched off. When ready, trigger sick master as normal. Okay. So, everything else needs to be off except for the monitor and the camera. Okay, we're going to see what's the very definition of poking a bear. Ah, crap. I think I broke it. How do you feel? Oh. Don't be scared. We have a situation under control. Um, few moments, I'm nervous more than anything. We'll okay, so that thing's now glowing. Make contact with the artifact. Open the test chamber. Oh, fantastic. What is it? Stay calm. You're doing fine. Don't be afraid. Is it some kind of eyeball? I'm sorry to have to do this, but we have to know. Whoa! My eyes! It's time to remember. remember what exactly? Oh god. <laughs> that thing just drill our head? We do? It's like a conscious black box. It can show you its memories. Look into it. The visions will translate onto the screen to be something that you can understand. 
that you can play out. Okay. What memories are these? What the frig? Well, I suppose this is gonna... Memory retrace. We wake up in the cryopod. Struggling against gravity, you force yourself up. Impact into the planet's surface has torn a hole in the ship hull. Poisonous atmosphere spills into your craft. You can navigate its memories. Use the computer. Work your way through. Oh, so this works in a similar way to the first one. You're in grave danger. You have to get out of here. Uh... Get out. Man not recognized. Leave cryopod. Let's look around. The craft is broken beyond repair. There is wreckage all around. An airlock door is locked tight and the computer terminal adjacent blank blinks. Use terminal. You tap at the screen and the airlock door splutters to life, slowly opening with a horrendous noise. The ship powers down to silence, having spent the last of the reserves. Um, go to airlock. This organ was taken from what we think was the leader. These memories are different, they're not like the others. There's more detail here. So we're being used to read an alien's memory? Okay, there's a thing called sharing too much, little eyeball. You squeeze through the damaged airlock and fall to your knees on the ground next to your vehicle. Every breath brings pain to your chest. You look around to see you are surrounded by mangled metal. Bright lights pour through every gap in the surrounding wreckage. It's describing the moment we found the ship. Mr. Asian, please continue. Okay, so we fell next to a vehicle. Uh, get into vehicle. Um, let's look around again. Crash sight. Smoke billows from the downed ship. Exterior lights flicker on and off. Wreckage around you. Looking upwards, you see unfamiliar star patterns. Leave wreckage. Look at stars. You don't recognize any of the star patterns above you. Look at lights. The lights are blinding. You can make out silhouettes, but you will need to move some of the surrounding wreckage for a better view. Oh, okay, so move wreckage. With every ounce of your remaining strength, you move away enough of the wreckage for you to carefully call through. The lights that surround you now attack your senses. Cover eyes. Uh, let's look around again. A circle of artificial lights surround you, set up to illuminate the crash site in the darkness. Behind them, an army of people all staring. One figure steps out, a silhouette, and walks towards you. Look at... Silhouette? The silhouette is bipedal and bulky. Some sort of mass covers its face. It beckons you to approach. Approach? Go to silhouette. Your heart rate is elevated, but you're doing well. Thank you. For it's worth very few of our test subjects ever make it this far. That's encouraging. Thank you. All right, let's get more. Oh, is that an astronaut? That was a lot of info that time. We 
We awake, the room is silent only for the quiet hum of equipment and occasional machine beep. Your touch isn't yours, we are all as one. We move together in unison. Let's look around again. We are in a bed in a small and artificially lit room with a single door. There is some sort of writing pinned to the wall. Adjacent it is a display monitor with wires that drape across the room and into our chests. They have tortured us. We didn't put this entity in quarantine. It expired at the crash. Whose memories are these? Might be our memories. Um, read writing. Symbols seem to indicate where on our body they had to cut. We've been butchered and maimed over and over. Look at monitor. The screen didn't give anything away. Flashing symbols and what could be numbers in rhythm. Uh, remove wires. Whoa. What just happened? What's that we yank at the wires protruding from our chest. Together, we all scream in pain. We. This action sets off an alarm echoing loudly down the adjacent corridor. Oh, these aren't memories. This is what we're thinking right now. Remove wires. The wires already hang loose. Black fluid flowing steadily out of the ends. Leave. Oh, are we controlling a different specimen? It's not a memory, it's happening right now. Mr. Oh, King, this is creepy, I like please. it. Okay. Let's help these things. Whoa. Oh! Oh, that was a crash site, alright. Some woman? Through the door we find ourselves in an empty room with a device on the table. It looks familiar. They don't know how it works, but this host does. The, this host? The door closes behind us and a lock clamps shut. We are alone. Together. Look at device. It was an access code terminal for a wide connection, allowing commanders to commandeer other hosts. Only you, I, we have access to these codes. It's time to use them. Use codes. What is that? We haven't seen that before. What is it doing? It's using the tool we recovered from the crash bag. It's in our systems. It's sending something across the network. It's broadcasting. Okay. Mr. Asian, please. We deeply regret what we have put you through, but please understand it was for the greater good. We had to know more. Rebelling now could be catastrophic. You don't know what this might be. Left or right to change line. glyph. So if I match the one that's in the top left corner of that screen. Okay. Okay, I think I have it. Eight. Little K. 8k zigzag diamond at the top. There we go! Cave's telling us the whole time. I just couldn't read the blurriness at the point. That's our shell. Oh, here's our other brother! They're converging. It's over. Oh, we released the hive. Are we like one of them now? Or are they gonna kill us? Ooh. Let's look at this memory one more time. We are one of them now. You must pay. Oh, that was cool. It's like watching short 
interactive like episodes of a really cool sci-fi series. I really like that. Well guys, that was a snapshot of untold stories. Episodes 1 and 2. Great stories. The interactive... Oh, that's my mic. The interactive keyboard session seemed to be like a running theme. And I really like that. We went from sort of horror atmosphere to more sci-fi elements. So I don't know where the two next stories are going to go. But I'm definitely going to revisit this once the 30 day challenge is over. Um, but I want to know what you guys thought of those stories. Have you played this game before? What do you like about it? Um, and just what's your favorite horror story, like your favorite short story or ghost story that you've ever heard. That I'd like to know. But for now, guys, thank you so much for joining me. As always, if you are enjoying the series, please leave a like um, down below. Any thoughts and please share away. It would be really appreciated if you did. If not, though, no worries, but I will see you next time. So until then, guys, take care. Bye.